Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 499. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we have breaking news. Yes, this is right hot off the press today. CBD and hemp are now legal in the United States. President Trump just signed the Farm Bill, which now allows for the legalization of hemp and leaves CBD decisions up to the states, which could really boost hemp farming in the United States. I'm going to share with you an article that was written by Market Watch. And this article covers a lot of the news of what's going on. So I'm going to share that with you. And then I'm going to, at the end, give you some of my thoughts about investing in this sector. And just so you know, I do invest in some of these companies and own some of these stocks that we're going to talk about. So just a heads up there and full disclosure. So the article on MarketWatch says, President Trump signed the 2018 Farm Bill on Thursday afternoon, which legalized hemp, a variety of cannabis that does not produce the psychoactive component of marijuana paving the way to legitimacy for an agricultural sector that has been operating on the fringe of the law. Industrial hemp has made investors and executives swoon because of the potential multi-billion dollar market for cannabidiol or CBD, a non-psychoactive compound that has started to turn up in beverages, health products, and pet snacks, among other products. The Farm Bill is a sprawling piece of legislation that sets U.S. government agricultural and food policy for the country and is renewed roughly every five years. This version of the bill places industrial hemp, which is defined as a cannabis plant with under 0.3% of tetrahydrocannabidinol, or THC, under the supervision of the Agriculture Department, and removes CBD from the purview of the Controlled Substances Act, which covers marijuana. The law also explicitly preserved the Food and Drug Administration's authority to regulate products containing cannabis or cannabis-derived compounds. The overall effect is not assured because, like cannabis, which is illegal under U.S. federal law, although some states have allowed medical or recreational use, States will continue to be able to enact laws related to CBD and industrial hemp, allowing for a potential patchwork of legislation across the country. Other questions remain in terms of how exactly the Agriculture Department will regulate the plant. As CBD goes mainstream and beverage giants, food companies, and others have begun to take serious interest in the roughly $2 billion U.S. market, Tilray Inc., announced a partnership with Anheuser-Busch InBev SA Bud this week to research marijuana-based beverages, and Constellation Brands Inc., STZ, has invested heavily in pot producer Canopy Growth Corp. Other large companies like Molson Coors Brewing Company, symbol TAP, have invested in research, and Coca-Cola, symbol KO, and others have at least considered making a play for the space. Smaller companies focused on CBD beverages, such as New Age Beverages Corp., symbol NBEV, have been targeted by investors, but some firms have used CBD-related announcements to pump stock prices as well as fuel excitement in a compound that scientists do not fully understand. Other companies operating in the sector will benefit too. Charlotte's Web Holdings, symbol CWBHF, has focused on a range of CBD products, capturing about 17% market share in 2017, with sales in 3,000 retail locations, according to PI Financial Research. The article goes on to say, UK-based GW Pharmaceuticals PLC, symbol GWPH, also stands to gain from the farm bill, as one of its flagship drugs, called Epidiolex, a seizure drug, counts CBD as an important component. 
Epidiolex is the first drug derived from cannabis that the Food and Drug Administration has approved. Despite uncertainties, cannabis executives and those tied only to the hemp growing industry are heralding the Farm Bill as a major victory for business owners and consumers. Qualis Cannabis Corp. Chief Product Officer Julian Morris said that the bill grants the same legitimacy to hemp farmers as others in agriculture. Quote, it allows them to use banks, get insurance, and investment capital will be less spooked, he said over the phone. Luke Zigovitz, chief executive of Wisconsin-based Hemp Science, said, We can finally relax because now we can source seed. Now we can sell our product across state lines. Prohibition is over. It broadens horizons, allowing universities to do research, for example. Beyond moving the industry into legitimacy, Zigovitz said there are opportunities for tobacco farmers in Wisconsin and elsewhere to start growing industrial hemp crops as well. In Canada, where cannabis for recreational use is legal under federal law, some of the largest licensed pot producers have been eyeing or actively trying to capture the CBD market via hemp-related expansion. Tilray Chief Executive Brendan Kennedy said over the phone earlier this week that his company has made a supply agreement with LiveWell Canada, Inc. to purchase industrial hemp-derived CBD that it will use for wellness and medical products distributed across the U.S. and Canada. Quote, that gives us the opportunity to meet increased demand in Canada and other countries around the world and presents us with the opportunity to capitalize on a $22 billion market for hemp-derived products, he said. Executives from Canopy Growth, symbol CGC, and rival Aurora Cannabis, Inc., symbol ACB, both discussed their hemp operations on September quarter earnings calls that included disappointing results related to early recreational pot sales. Aurora declined to comment on the latest developments and Canopy did not make executives available by the time of publication. We have intellectual property that we've developed around how to manage hemp and that we thought was prudent because I think hemp is going to happen in the U.S. and when it does, I know that's not the time to start, said Canopy Chief Executive Bruce Linton in November's earning conference call. You should have already been started up and ramped up and get ready to revenue up. We think we are. Aurora Chief Corporate Officer Cam Batley said in the company's earnings call last month that it has made acquisitions in Lithuania and Uruguay, as well as taken a stake in an Alberta-based hemp producer, giving it a strong position in the market. With this large presence in the CBD space, we're embarking on a CBD-focused strategy that covers the entire value chain from supply through genetics, research, and clinical trials to product development and distribution and distributing product to international markets across five continents, Batley said in the call. Kronos Group, symbol C-R-O-N, unlike some of its Canadian rivals, may not be as well positioned to take advantage of changes to industrial hemp laws in the U.S. It has not banked sales from hemp-related products, nor does it have assets related to hemp, Kronos declined to comment. Cannabis stocks mostly fell Thursday with a few exceptions. Tilray gained 10.4% after Wednesday's announcement. Kronos fell 2.3%, Canopy dipped 1.8%, and Aurora dropped 3.6%. Alternative Harvest ETF MJ was down 2.2% as the S&P 500 index declined 1.6%. End of article. And I will include a link to the article on my website. There are also lots of articles that are connected to this particular article. So MarketWatch has lots of links going to other articles that would allow you to study up more on hemp and cannabis. But the one thing that I really want to stress is that there is tremendous opportunity in growth in this market. A lot of people have tried to put into numbers what kind of growth this is, and it's looking like an estimated 17% compounded annual growth rate. I think that's very, very conservative. And I think if you are looking for an exciting growth opportunity, I think this is going to provide it for you because a lot of the projections for when the rest of the states are going to approve hemp and cannabis are saying around 2021 to 2022, which would make this a very early opportunity for you to jump in on, which 
let's face it, for those people who are still really bullish on Bitcoin, which I'm not, but a lot of people missed the Bitcoin bonanza, and that's because it started early and you had to be in early in order to really take advantage of it. With these kinds of companies, I think the same thing is true where you're going to want to identify who, who are the early market movers and who is going to dominate the space. And you have to be well diversified because some of these companies might be very speculative. Some of them might go out of business. So you have to use only your speculative capital. Don't put all of your money in these companies, but try to maybe take a, a smaller sector of your portfolio. I always say 10% is a part of your portfolio that you can speculate with. The rest should be in your proper asset allocation, but you can look at some individual stocks in that 10% of your portfolio. And this might be one of the sectors that you wanna look at. An easy way to get in is simply to buy the ETF, MJ, which may not be appropriate for everyone, so please check with your financial advisor, but it is an easy way to buy a diversified portfolio in one purchase. So that might be something for you to consider for your portfolio. Anyway, I wanted to report this to you right away because this is very exciting news. I do think that the wealth building opportunities here are as big as I've seen. And as you know, my investments in the internet space were in some of the larger internet companies early on. And that is what allowed me to make $2 million by the time I was 39. This is an exciting opportunity that feels like the same kind of opportunity. Now, remember back in the internet space, a lot of those companies did go out of business. A lot of them were speculative and it did turn into a big bubble. But if you didn't get caught up and get late in the bubble, you did make a lot of money early on with those growing companies and identifying companies that really were profitable and making money and not just ones being speculative. You know, back in that time, anything that had a dot com on the end seemed to go crazy. And a lot of those companies weren't making any profits. So it was insane for investors to even invest in those when they had no profits. What you wanna do is find the companies that are making a lot of money, that are having success, that are gaining market share early on, and those are the ones that are going to likely be the long-term winners, and that's where you make the big money, is getting into the long-term winning companies. So I wanted to report this exciting news to you. I was very surprised. I did not realize this was in the farm bill. CBD oil and hemp have a lot of different uh, uses, not only for, as the article said, recreational things, beverages, but also medical and pain relief and relief from seizures and actually curing some illnesses, I'm told. So the research on this is very exciting. There's a lot yet to happen with it. Uh, it's just, again, just starting out in the very early phases, but something I wanted to bring to you and um, I did do a previous podcast that mentioned cannabis. And if you haven't listened to that podcast, I would go back and listen to me talk about cannabis over there. But this is uh, very, very good news. Very good news for consumers, very good news for medical uses, good news for farmers, good news for investors. And I think we're gonna see a lot of growth in this area. It's gonna be something I'm gonna be talking more about and something that I think has the potential to be a future huge winner in the markets. So we'll be keeping our eye on this. We'll be reporting it to you. And I hope you subscribe to the podcast so you can get updated on all of my updates as soon as they're available. And if you weren't aware, we have a contest going on right now that will allow you to win 25 prizes, including my Wealthy Mindset Blueprint, which normally sells for $197 which is how to get more of a wealthy mindset and my wealth heiress book, which I will personalize for you. And we've got many copies of that to give away. And you can also win a half hour wealth mentoring session with me valued at $500. And that's the only way you can get a private session with me to enter. It's super simple. You just need to leave a podcast review on iTunes, that will get your name entered into the drawing twice. If you write a book review on Amazon, 
that will get your name entered into the hat three times. If you buy the book on Amazon and review it on Amazon, that gets your name in the hat five times. And if you do a podcast review and an Amazon review, that gets your name in the drawing 10 times. So your chances of winning are tremendous. We have lots of prizes. I hope you do the reviews and enter. And thank you to the people who have done the reviews already. I am so tickled pink reading what you have to say. I loved the last one that I read, which was that their wife usually doesn't like financial podcasts, but she likes mine. And guys, you will find that your wives and girlfriends will like this podcast. I hope you introduce them to it. And women, I hope you will introduce your guys to it so that they can enjoy it as well. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.